In today's tutorial, we take a logo, in this case it's the Puma logo, and we animate it. Everything that's done in today's tutorial can be done on the free version of DaVinci Resolve. So all the ingredients for today's project, we will be using logo with a transparent background, transform nodes, rectangle masks, as well as custom masks. And we'll also be adding a unique animation with the grid warp node. Stick around for this one. All right, before we get started here, we're going to preheat the oven to 30 frames per second. And then once we do that, we need to grab our ingredients. And today we're going to just be using a Puma logo with a transparent background. You can't see it there. We'll just grab that and drop it down here. Oh, there we go, now we can see it. Okay, so the idea here is we're going to take each and every letter, animate it a little bit, and then have the end product just being the logo as it is, but the introduction to the logo or the logo um, appearing is going to be very dynamic and it's going to have a lot of movement. But we're going to start with just a static uh, logo. So first I'm just going to grab a background and we're going to make it a little off-white and then we're going to just have this sitting on a background so we can see it a little easier. All right so the next thing I want to do is bring in a background and I'm just going to make the background invisible and the idea here is that I want to cut out each letter and then cut out the cat as well, but have it sit on a transparent background so I can manipulate it without having any additional background cut in there. So here's my uh, blank background. I took the alpha all the way down because before it was up and it was black. So I have it all the way down. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, lay this particular shot which is just the logo on top of that transparent background, like so. Now I have the transparent background and the logo in here, and I need to cut out the a, a portion that I want to manipulate. So if I put, now play this merge, you can see that this rectangle is affecting what's actually being displayed. So now I'm just going to bring over the rectangle and size it up so that just the P can be visible in this merge. So now that I've done that, I'm going to do that for each letter and the cat quick. Oh, one other thing that I wanted to say is you can use the background over and over again. So I'm just going to connect the background up here. I'm going to also connect the logo up so I don't have to make multiples. And for the cat, I'm going to make a custom mask. Okay, now I have each element, if I play them, I have each element here and I labeled them by changing the, by just renaming them. So now I have each element and now I need to add in something to affect their movement. So I'm going to be using a transform. To get the transform, you can either hold sh you can hold shift and then hit spacebar to bring up the search, or you can come up into the effects library, tools, and it's in transform, and then the transform node. Or additionally, you could right click down here, add tools, transform, add the transform node. So there's all the different ways. Okay, now I'm going to add a transform to each one, but I'm just gonna work at it one at a time and I'm going to add in the animation in which I want to have um, this do. And then everything's gonna get brought back into, um, into uh, one node to have as the output then. 
So right now I'm working with this uh, transform on the P. So now I need to determine what kind of an animation do I want to do. You have tons of different things you can do. You can move it around on the screen like so. Uh, you could change the size of it. Uh, you could turn it, but if I was to turn it, one thing that I want to do is move this pivot. And you can see the little little crosshairs that are moving. You're going to want to move that to like a center point because that's going to be where it's actually, uh, where the uh, um, angle is going to be pivoting. So now it will turn here instead of turning in the middle of the frame like it previously was. So I'm going to actually use that. I'm going to um, come back to frame zero over here and I'm going to keyframe the angle and the size. I'm going to start it down at zero so it's not visible. And then let's say uh, coming up to frame eight, it will then become visible. And when it becomes visible, I also want to have it um, come in a little past um, straight up and down. So it's going to start over here Let's actually have this start going the opposite way. So when it comes in, it goes over. And now I need to add in the rest of the bouncing. So I'm just going to go a couple of frames ahead and go backwards, come up a couple more frames, sit here, come back forward, a couple more have it center. Now, if we watch this, it's not gonna look all that great. So come up into the spline editor and we are on transform one. Transform one's right here. We have our size and our angle. I'm just going to get rid of the size and just have the angle. I'm gonna take all of my keyframes and hit F and smooth them out a little bit. And now let's take a look and see how it looks. Okay, that looks good. Now, because this particular node is doing all of the movement, I can add in motion blur to this particular node. So I'm gonna come over here, add in motion blur, and I'm gonna turn this up to about eight. And it's gonna use a bit more resources to determine where the motion blur exists. But now that it's cached, now I have a P that comes in. Now for each of my other letters, I can add in a different look. For my U, I'm actually going to do the same exact thing, but I'm just going to have it, I'm just going to copy, paste it, add it in, but then on for, for this transform, Okay, that was a bit weird that it didn't show up, but I just went into my keyframes and then clicked on transform one one and now it showed up in the spline editor. It's a little bizarre. So now all I'm going to do is I'm just going to recreate that. I felt like that was a little weird. Come into here, click this so it shows up down here. Now I'm going to remove one one copy all of this i'm going to hold shift and then move it down just a couple of frames and now let's see what these two look like together there was a unique thing that happened here is because i copied over the transform one one in my inspector you'll see that the pivot obviously is over here it was set up for the p but this particular transform is controlling the U. So it adds an effect that's a little different. Um, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a little different. I think if I bring it back just a little bit, so once the P shows up and use this other transform, 
I wanna see how this will look. So I'm holding shift. I'm just going to bring it back just a little bit. So my U is in here with it. It's a unique thing going here where they're all just kind of following because it's like stepped out by one frame. I actually, I think I'm going to add this to all of my others. Wabam, right? Okay. See, I had to, so that I could keep this going at a quicker rate, if you, this little bar here, if you just right click and you can turn off high quality and motion blur and then turn on proxy, what will happen is even though you have, so like on this frame here or on that node, I have motion blur, it'll get rendered out. But while I'm working on the project, I don't want my computer to render that when I'm just doing these little adjustments to get the project together. Um, I don't need to see all that motion blur and things move a lot quicker. So just a little fun fact for you. Okay, next I, I'm going to manipulate the cat. I'm not entirely sure. I do have an idea of um, kind of reshaping the cat. I'm not exactly sure how I want to uh, get the cat to that location. Um, yeah, so let's let's see here. So maybe I could do like a double a double wipe. So it wipes across the cat and then wipes across the cat the other way quick. So it'll wipe across in a bright color and then it'll wipe across in another color. And then at the end, once the other wipe happens, I'll make the tail wiggle a little bit. So let's just do that. All right, so to do this, I'm going to, so right here is my, I'll just change this quick. Here is my cat layer. I'm going to get a background, which is just going to be, let's just do red, that's fine. And uh, if I connect this, what I'll then get is a red cat. And then let's get the, 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 the um, transparent background in here. And so let's do this. The overlay will be of the cat and then the the uh, transparent background that I have down here that I've been using, that will be the background. So we have the same exact thing, but now for this merge, the red cat is the uh, foreground. So what I can now do is I can bring in a uh, rectangle and then I can affect where that cat is. So I'm just going to make this a bit bigger. And because it's going to be a wipe, if I, um, I can add in like a bit of a soft edge here. So we'll do that. And then I'll start here. And where do all of our letters? Okay, so down here is the last letter that comes in or that, that wiggles. So let's start it here. And I will make the center uh, keyframed. And then let's just come over five frames and then have the cat appear. So just like that. And now we will have this as the background layer for another cat. So let's have a, another cat. So let's come into here, come out of here, into here. And then for this node, now I'm playing this one. Um, what color cat do I want? Let's go with a black cat because it'll go onto a white background because all the letters are black. Okay, so we'll go with a black cat. And then from the black cat, I'll just bring the, the actually no, I'll leave it here. The black cat. So here we have a red cat that's animated, right? Boom, boom. Okay, that animation stops right there at 30. So now I'm going to have this cat as the background and then the black will wipe over it. So we'll get another merge and we will come into that as the background. And then the foreground will be the black cat. So if we play this, it'll just be a black cat. We need to manipulate that foreground. So we'll bring in another rectangle. And now we can manipulate that. And I just want to grab the value of the soft edge that we used. Okay, so now we have that. We'll just make this a bit bigger. And this time, let's have it wipe the other way. 
have it switch it up. So keyframe here, five frames and wipe it. So let's take a look and see how this looks. We'll add this to the end. This is our last node that has all of our, well, it should have all of our letters. And then we will connect our cat here to the end. So now we should have everything. And now let's watch this quick. So there's Puma. And there's the, the cat reveal. Now let's watch that in real time. Puma, cat reveal. Puma, cat reveal. So after we have a completed cat, now I want to manipulate the tail. So to manipulate the tail, we're going to um, just add what's referred to as a grid warp. And then we will connect that here and we will disconnect there and then reattach this. And now with our grid warp, where does our cat? There's, okay. So right here, let's go at 43. What's cool now is we can manipulate, right now the only thing that's on here is the cat. We can manipulate anything we want here by using these grid points. Um, so if I was to move one of these, it's going to manipulate everything that was in that square's region. If we just take our mouse cursor and we move it, it's going to manipulate anything that's in this circle. So if I move this over here, it's going to manipulate all of the points that are in this circle. So if I go here, it's gonna manipulate all the points in that circle and so on. So to make this a bit smaller, if we just reduce the size here, now we can fine tunely adjust this. I'm gonna come down here and click on animate and we will start with the animation right here, but we're going to bring up the tail a little bit. And what you'll notice is because this is such a small selection, it's going to morph a lot of its current position. So having this larger sometimes helps um, because it'll grab more portion, it'll, it'll grab more points. Um, and it won't be so hard to not have it look like um, the tail is getting really deformed. And now that we're moving all of this and we are moving, you know, because this was so big before, now we are grabbing some of these uh, exterior points because they were closer together before. So if if these are all mushed together, now I pick just this area, it's going to grab both of those. Um, so that's just something to be aware of. All right, so there's our little animation. Um, now let's take a look at the whole thing. Uh, as the last node here. So our Puma comes in. Okay, normal speed. All right, last thing on this grid warp, I'm just going to add motion blur into this as well. All right, now I can go over into our, or sorry. Now I just need to connect up our output so that this goes back to our timeline. So there we go. Uh, one last thing, if I wanted to, I could add in, was that the background? Yeah, we could add in this background. I don't know what it's currently connected to. Uh, but we'll just take all of this. Let's close some of this stuff, make this a little easier. Bring this down here. Uh, bring it there. We'll overlay the logo on top of everything. 
can connect this over. So there we go. And now, back on our edit tab, we should have our cat and all of our funky animations. So there you go. Now you have the general outline of how to animate a logo by taking a static object, cutting it up into separate pieces, animating those separate pieces, then conjoining everything back together into that logo then you can use you know wherever you want it doesn't have to be on the gray background like i did here it could be over a video it could be a element that you then use in a uh, title sequence or something like that but yeah let me know in the comments what you think about this one if you have any ideas or suggestions on something i should do in the future let me know down there as well again my name's jr and thanks for watching